Hi and welcome. The goal of this episode is to implement client-side validation and refactor form code a little bit. So now data is validated on server, but that's not cool to validate it only there. We use awesome top-of-the-shelf client-side tag, so we must implement validation on client as well. Actually, we already done almost everything for client-side validation because for now we need to run the same validation rules on client as we did on server. And as we use JavaScript everywhere, it makes it easy to reuse code, so let's do just that. So let's open our signup form. So here in submit, I'm going to wrap this code that dispatch actions and basically makes this Ajax request into this conditional and I'll use this is valid function to make sure that state is valid. Okay, so only in this case, if it returns true, we make in this Ajax request. So now we need to define this function and we'll reuse validate input function we created earlier for our server side validation and it will take this state object as a data. And again, we're going to deconstruct it in constants, errors, and is valid. So now, if it's not valid, then I want to set state and populate state with errors from this validation. Okay, I can just do it like this. And at the end, I want to return this is valid, so I can use this boolean here to make sure that if it's valid, we make the server-side request. If not, we just ignore everything from here. So now we need to extract this function we created in routes users. We created this function here, validate input, so we're going to cut it and let's create new file. In server we'll have a shared folder, inside of it we'll have validations and we call it sign up. And we're going to export default this function. So it takes data and it uses validator, so we need to import validator from validator. And here in users, we do not need to have validator anymore. We do not need to have is empty as well, so is empty also going to be required here. All we need to do, we need to import this function, validate input from shared validations sign up. So we extracted this function into separate file, so now we can require it from our component here. So let's import validate input function from server shared validations sign up. Let's try it out. I'm gonna save, I'm gonna run npm run server. Let's go to browser, reload the page, and we have unexpected token import. And that happens because we actually need to instruct Webpack to include this file into the bundle. So let's do this. We're going to open Webpack config and we need to add new path to include. So we change it to be an array of strings like this. And we're going to add another path, join, do name, and we'll use server shared. Let's save it and let's rerun our server. So now if we go back, reload the page, no errors, everything works fine. If you go to sign up, we still should have our validations, so our extracted function works fine. That's good news. And as you can see, we do not make any network requests, so this is actually the client-side validation right here. To check that we haven't broken anything with server-side side, let's remove this is valid and we'll just return true, go back here, and now if we press sign up, we make in the request to server and validation works as it worked before. So we've done with validations, excellent. So now let's look here in our markup. We have a lot of duplications here with these form groups, and that's not good. If we need to change this markup in the future, that's gonna be a pain. As we clearly see this shameless duplication here, we can and should extract this into a separate component. So let's create a new file. In components folder, we'll create another folder called common, and inside of it, we'll have text field group.js. So here we're going to create functional component, and we call it text field group, 
And first, let's make sure that we get this component API straight. So if you uh, look here, we need to pass a value, we need to pass on change, type, name, and errors as well. So let's define text, field group, prop types. The first one is field, the field name is gonna be string is required. And I'm gonna copy most of them. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna add commas here. So the next one is going to be value. Of course, we need value for our input field. Next, we'll have label for form group. Next, we'll have error. And error is not actually required, so I'm gonna remove it. So it could be empty without any errors. The next one will be type, because input can be different types, text, password, email, number, etc. And the last one is going to be on change, which is actually not a string, but a function. Also, most of the time, input type will be text. So let's define the default prop for it. So we use text field group default props and type gonna be text by default. So now let's deconstruct it right here so we can easy access to them. So we're gonna have field, value, label, error, type, and on change. Now let's define the rest of the component. It's very easy, it's just a markup stuff. So I'm gonna paste it here like this. So we have the class name, we have label, which uses label, we have input with, with all the fields, and we have error. So the only thing we need to do is to input class names from class names. Okay, so now back to our signup form. So here I can remove and change these four text field groups. And instead of them, I will paste the new one that we just created, text field group. So, and as you can see, we just declare error, we just declare label, on change, value, and field without any markup, which is a good thing. So now we need to import it, text field group from components, common components, text field group. We still need class names here because we use class names as well in this time zone select, and we could extract select field as well, but let's postpone it until we get another select in the app, until we get actual duplication. So let's save it, go back to browser and have a look. I'm gonna refresh and it works. Nice. So let's commit. Adds client side validation and extracts text field group. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching.